Awesome. So today we're going to talk about a few things. Uh, we'll move through these topics you see here uh, with a focus on some of the graphs we have and the challenges. Uh, we'll spend some time there. And as always, questions in chat if you have anything, would love to hear them. Somebody sounds like they're unmuted. So if you would please mute yourself, that would be appreciated. Uh, going into our accomplishments, we have a bunch of new hires who are making a huge impact right now. So I want to give a shout out to every one of our new hires. Tiago, Diana, Lyle, Nam Ho, keep it up, doing great work. We just closed an EMEA hire, which is going to help us a ton. And I'll show you more of the data there in a bit. Uh, so we are doing really, really well building this team. We're starting to build the resources we need to build our team, which is helping an incredible amount. So I want to give a shout out to recruiting as well, because you've been super helpful. People Ops and the whole hiring team, uh, that is helping us be more successful. Now moving into some of our graphs, I want to take a second. If you're new to GitLab, you may have never seen a support functional group update or understand what this data is. So I want to just talk about it for a quick second. Um, both of these, this table and this graph, show the same thing relatively uh, from two different angles. Um, looking at the table, the important column is really that last column all the way to the right, the ticks column. That shows us how much debt we've created week over week. If it's green, it means that we've solved some debt. If it's red, that means we created debt. And you can see we kind of have a little bit of a cycle happening there. Now, if you look at the green graph, you can see that we are trending almost, we, the graph is trying to pop its way up and we keep holding it down and pushing it down ever so slightly. Um, so that is really, really good from our side. Our goal is to get this to zero. So lower is better. Uh, and we're working our way to doing that. So a few functional group updates ago, we wanted to, we thought we wouldn't be able to hold this line. And it's clear that due to hiring we were. So that's really awesome. Uh, the other things to think about are the way that we beat this is by becoming more efficient and automating as much as possible right now. There's a lot that we're doing that we can better automate. So I'm working with uh, some of our senior staff in the support band here, support function, excuse me, uh, to make sure that we can automate more things. Now, this is a new graph that I have here uh, that focuses on our on-prem support, which covers GitLab starter, premium, and ultimate. And what this graph shows is the percent of our SLAs achieved every day. And then the blue and the green lines are the averages. Now, you can see that there was a period where we were doing worse than we were before. And now we've reversed that and gone up. And that was a process change that we implemented. Uh, we tried a process, it was failing. And then we saw that and we changed it. And now we're doing better than we've ever done before. And the things to pay attention to here are seeing that we're getting less volatile on our way to 100%. The average over the last 30 days is about 84%. So we're doing really well and we want to get better. Our goal is to get this to 100. Now, I want to move over to this graph, which is focused on the services function, which covers GitLab.com customers who have paid us and Git host um, customers as well. Now, you can see this graph, we reach 100% more often, but the graph also dips much lower. It's much more volatile, um, but you can see that we're still trending up and we are gonna continue that upward trend as we hire and build out this band to focus on this support. Now, to think about that, on-prem is a much larger team, so that's why we're able to reduce volatility. We're hoping to grow the services group there to allow us to reduce volatility, but we don't wanna get it too big, right? We don't wanna be uh, gluttonous. We wanna be as efficient as possible. And the last thing that I wanna call out here um, is, our premium SLAs specifically. You could see quarter over quarter due to team size, growth, and due to our process improvements, we've been able to dramatically increase our premium SLA coverage, which is wonderful. 
We're trying to get all of our SLAs to 100, but our premium has been our first and major focus. Now, I just talked a bit about premium, uh, excuse me, I talked a bit about on-prem and services. So I wanted to make a slide that covered the difference. If you're new to GitLab, you might be asking yourself, well, what's the difference? And our on-prem engineers are focused on helping on-prem customers. It's a slightly different role than services. Our services are focused on .com and Git host and making sure that efficiency, efficiency, efficiency. On on-prem, we don't have as much control over that. It's a little bit more abstract. We can fix the product. We can try and, and solve some bugs and things like that. But on the services side, since we are running the infra, we have extreme amount of influence and control. And that's going to be the goal, to, to get that process as tight a loop as possible. And that will help us be successful. So different teams for slightly different support processes, excuse me, different bands. So the challenges we have right now, if we want to scroll back in time, if we want to use the back button on our browser, go way back about 18 months ago, we were not synchronizing customers into Zendesk, which is the tool we use for tickets. So anybody that came into Zendesk would get support which was okay, but we were charging for support, so we wanted to make sure we prioritized people that were paying for it. So we integrated with Salesforce uh, to use a tool that they provide to integrate with Zendesk. It works really well for about 90% of the cases, but I've had many calls over the last two weeks about this, many angry account execs and sales folk coming over upset and it's happening with Salesforce. Uh, the data in Salesforce is not getting passed over correctly. I'm not sure why. And when that fails, we can't succeed. So we're working on improving that because once the source of truth is 100%, we can make sure that we're 100%. Um, we need support engineering management. Uh, that's really going to be the next critical piece to the support puzzle at GitLab. Uh, trying to find the right mix of engineering manager has been extremely challenging. Most of the candidates we find are extremely talented managers, but they have no idea what Git is. They have no idea about anything about Ruby on Rails or any of the technologies we're using, which means that they aren't the right fit for our group. Uh, and trying to find that right fit is my ultimate goal. And as always, we're about to pull off the impossible by moving from one provider to another which I am very excited and I think we will do an incredible job at. I've already started working with the GCP migration team and asking questions there following along. I think we're doing phenomenal, but things will break. Something will break. And so services support band will be responsible for that. Uh, so we wanna be ready and we're gonna see. So a few functional group updates from now, we'll report back on that and see what's happened. So there's another piece here that I wanna talk about, support fix. Um, this is a new initiative uh, that we are starting in, in support, and I have an MR for it. I'll link it in the slide. Um, I forgot to link that. I apologize. We are noticing that there are some bugs and some performance things that support engineers could fix, right? So we want to focus on doing that. Uh, there's no reason why we can't do that. So on-prem support engineers will spend some of their time actually engineering fixes, which will allow product to move faster and do things like that. And I want to take a quick moment to really emphasize, this is not, we will not do anything that is a new feature. We will not do anything that is uh, not been proved or, or vetted by product. This is somebody saying like, hey, this view is really slow to load. We can dive in, take a look, understand it, profile it, and then uh, start to make some changes. And if you look at the merge requests there, we've already started doing this. Uh, shout out to Drew and Eric for making some changes there uh, that will help improve our product. Uh, that is what we wanna do. We will not add new things, uh, just help make our product stronger. So talking about hashtag goals, premium SLA, we are doing everything we can to get this to 100% by the end of the quarter. And if hiring goes to plan, which we are working on, uh, I think we will get very, very close to 100%. Uh, a lot of companies target 90%. We're going for 100%. We're going for that. Uh, so I'm really excited about that. All of our other SLAs will come up 
behind that and we're gonna raise them up as well. I expect that to take about six months, so we'll keep an eye on that. Support fix, like I just iterated over, and then we have a lot of process and telling the world about the great things that we're doing. Um, that's, a, that's a job in, of a, in and of itself, and we wanna do a better job of that. Uh, that would be super helpful. So before we get to questions, I wanna give a, a moment. Sid gave a functional group update training the other day, and he said, uh, I like to click on all the links in the functional group updates. So for the astute viewer, for the astute uh, follower, I've added Easter eggs to my last few functional group updates. Nobody's found one yet, but there are links hidden throughout this uh, document. I'll see if Sid will find them all, um, but most of them are just fun things. If you have a minute, you can find one, um, but they're nothing serious. I didn't hide anything serious. So there are some Easter eggs in uh, this FGU. I'm gonna turn over to questions and see what I can answer here. I got five in the chat right now. Okay. Um, Jordan says, copper key, question mark. Not sure if I get the reference, so sorry about that. Um, Toon says, and I pronounced your name wrong, I apologize. What's the penalty when we breach SLAs? Um, massive tiers. Um, there, there's really no penalty in the sense of we beyond we failed our customer, right? We took longer than we said we would. Um, and that's a penalty in and of itself. And the thing to remember is in the support world, our job is to take care of the customer, but at the same time, our job is extremely stressful because of SLAs. Um, we're always under the gun, if you will. We're always fighting against time. Uh, so we have that in our mind. Um, and it's, it's a morale thing as well, right? When we fail SLAs, uh, it decreases morale. Um, so that's one of the, the penalties. Uh, beyond that, uh, no other formal penalties, uh, but just beyond affecting morale. So if there are any other questions, I'm happy to answer them. Um, Larry's, Larry has a great point there. It, it impacts our ability to... Uh, to enhance the relationship with the customer and future sales, which I agree with wholeheartedly. Um, I'll give another minute for any questions if anybody's typing. If not, thank you all for your time. Thank you for tuning in to a functional group update here. It's fun to make. I look forward to somebody finding an Easter egg and uh, telling me about it. If not, everyone all have a great day. Bye all.